Data loggers are now frequently used for water level measurement by hydrogeologists and field technicians. This course introduces you to some basic concepts and methods for beginners. The course outline is broken into three areas. The first area will cover the basic concepts. The second, we will review some of the standard protocols for measurement taking. And lastly, we'll illustrate some practical field methods. There is a base of knowledge that we are assuming you are familiar with, such as common terms like pressure, water level measurement, elevation, aquifer, unconfined, and water table, among others. Also, you should be familiar with the concept of quality control and quality assurance. And for simplicity's sake, all of our examples deal with the water table in an unconfined aquifer. All right, so let's get into some of the basic data logger concepts. What is a data logger? Well, it's a term that is used quite widely in this course. However, uh, data loggers are also known by a variety of other terms, such as pressure transducers, pressure sensors, or simply transducers. They're available in a wide variety of makes and models with a, a quite a large range of capabilities and associated cost scale. The data loggers allow for automated water level measurements to be obtained at rapid rates and uh, or in remote locations where you cannot visit too frequently to take measurements. They help us uh, monitor water levels. To do this, data loggers measure water or air pressure and record those pressure measurements as a digital time series file and then allow these files to be retrieved as needed. You may ask, well, why measure pressure? The data logger measures pressure because uh, it's used to help it determine a water level measurement. The pressure reading is used as an indirect measure of water level. And it's important to note that the data logger pressure readings have to be converted to an equivalent water level measurement. Okay, so let's have a look at this diagram on the next slide. Water pressure obviously increases with depth. Uh, we've all experienced it diving in pools where our ears can feel more pressure as we dive deeper underwater. These pressure values can be converted to an equivalent water depth value. However, there are a number of practical factors that we must consider. Okay, so let's have a look at the little diagram on the bottom of the slide. You have two sets of arrows. One is the blue arrow, which is what we want to measure, and that is the pressure due to the water column at a particular depth below the water level. But we also have the effect of atmospheric air pressure that is also acting on the same water column. So the total pressure at depth at the bottom is the combined water plus atmospheric pressure. So let's have a look at how data loggers measure pressure. Some have a vent tube to the atmosphere, which allows gauge pressure measurements of the pressure of water directly. And some data loggers are actually sealed units that measure the total or absolute pressure. And in order to obtain the pressure of water above, you must also measure the pressure of the atmosphere, usually with a separate device called a barrel logger and then you subtract that value from your pressure readings of water. Now let's look at some data logger construction basics. Data loggers essentially have two components. First, the pressure sensor, and secondly, the internal electronics that include a battery. The pressure sensor has a diaphragm of sorts one side of it is exposed to the water and the diaphragm changes its shape as the pressure changes against it. The changing shape of the pressure transducer also changes the electrical resistance across the diaphragm. Some people also refer to this as a bridge circuit. This changing diaphragm shape provides a range of voltage signals 
that correspond to equivalent pressure readings. For each measurement, the internal electronics provides voltage to the sensor, then converts the returning signal to a pressure reading and records the data. On this slide, you'll see an example of a vented sensor. This is actually quite an old example, but you'll see the blue communication and venting cable on the left and the cylindrical uh, stainless steel sensor on the right. In this slide, we actually see a sensor that's been uh, dismantled where you can see the internal electronics as well as the pressure sensor and diaphragm and the connection to the vent tube at the end with the other small yellow arrow on the right. So let's review the two primary data logger types, the vented models and non-vented models. On the left, you notice the vented model allows for air pressure or atmospheric pressure to be canceled out across the diaphragm. And in the non-vented, you can see that there is a constant pressure pushing down from inside the unit against both the water and atmospheric pressure externally. Okay, let's talk about some of the standard methods that are used uh, for uh, operating data loggers. A few of them do exist. Actually, there's two that we can reference here, the uh, U.S. Geological Survey, and there's one from the ISO. The U.S. Geological Survey has a paper written called The Use of Submersible Pressure Transducers in Water Resources Investigations written in uh, 2004 and it provides a pretty good detailed explanation of some of the theory and construction and operation of data loggers so we uh, urge you to refer to that publication for some more details the second one the ISO 2005 reference uh, is a international standard uh, organization reference and has a document number there 23211 so it's quite similar to the USGS paper and the methodology presented by the USGS so we also uh, want to refer you to that publication for more details it's uh, obviously both the documents are quite exhaustive in their uh, cover of this topic so in summary the uh, a detailed theoretical background information of standard operating procedures exist and they deal with a lot of different instrument types and conditions but uh, for most practical applications uh, using the uh, commercially available uh, complete data logger units that you'll find out there some basic understanding of how things operate and common sense about their use will result in good data and we also encourage folks to develop a practical SOP for your own organization. So this brings us to our last section of the course, some practical field methods. Obviously, in these two photos on this slide, we want to try and avoid these situations. These are mistakes that uh, we have found uh, in the field or that we've already made ourselves. Some you can see are a result of uh, poor planning uh, and you know situations where we really were able to predict what could have happened. And here are some more mistakes where installations uh, are measuring pretty much nothing at all. Um, on the left there with the flowing well uh, as well as messy installations. Again, poor planning has resulted in quite a mess of cable and um, uh, data logger readings that are not going to be very reliable. So you're probably asking yourself, how can I achieve data logger success? Well, all the data loggers that are commercially available, um, either vented or non-vented, can provide accurate and valid water level data provided they are installed and used correctly. So we break it down into four basic considerations. The choice of the data logger, understanding the use of the data logger, ensuring a proper installation technique, and then properly converting those readings to levels. When choosing a data logger, there are actually quite a few factors to consider 
depending on your project. And some of these include obviously the type, whether you want to go with a vented or a non-vented type of logger, the measurement range that you will require, how much are the water levels expected to fluctuate, um, what type of accuracy are you expected or do you need to have in your measurements, how often are the frequency of your measurements, um, your installation, um, will you be hanging it on a wire or will it be fixed in some location, how will you be getting the data, so the communication method, uh, what is your expected battery life for the unit as well as the materials that it's constructed of, its uh, reliability and durability options, uh, whether you want something that's perhaps plastic or stainless steel. Uh, there are also models out there that have ceramic parts. The various options to the user, um, that could be the software or could be simply the number of parameters that a uh, logger is able to measure. And it may come to, you know, more importantly, when you run into those troubles, are you um, able to get the technical support you need to get you past that uh, particular issue that you're dealing with? And warranty uh, of the product, and it's always good to pick a company. They seem to typically have a, a standard policy across the board, um, but that's also something to make sure you're aware of. Um, the flexibility of the monitoring that the unit allows you to do and perhaps are there any special conditions um, that you need to consider. The final choice of data logger will depend upon your project ultimately and the organizational needs. So the specific recommendations of a data logger are beyond the scope of this course. The key though is to plan each data logger installation starting with why you need it, what data you need to collect, what conditions the data logger will encounter at the well, how will it be installed, and how will it be maintained and the data downloaded. So the second basic data logger consideration is the use of the data logger. So once you choose your data logger, you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions regarding communication, programming, and use, but you should also test each data logger before it goes into the field. Develop your own QAQC program that starts when you install the data logger. It's also very important to regularly maintain and download the data logger so you know the sensors have not been fouled, perhaps by excessive uh, algae growth or um, sedimentation in the well, but also that the data logger memory is not overloaded. And as well, review your data and check for errors. Another key factor is to remember you're using the data logger to calculate the equivalent water level measurements. So you need to calibrate the measurement and conversion process. This happens by obtaining regular manual water level measurements to compare to the data your data logger is giving you. Regularly check to ensure the data logger is responding correctly to water level change. And remember, most importantly, no data logger will last forever. Monitor parameters that predict failure, such as drift in your levels, battery levels, and other anomalies before it happens so that you can replace the unit in time. That brings us now to installation considerations. There are quite a few factors that you could consider when installing your data logger. Uh, some of the factors we find are most important are obviously the depth to water and well construction. So looking at the overall total well depth, how much you expect the water level to vary over time. Uh, you obviously definitely want to avoid a situation where your data loggers uh, hanging in the air and not measuring water level changes at all. The maximum pressure or depth um, that you need to submerge the logger to, that is another thing you need to uh, consider because it is possible to overpressure a logger and damage the sensor type of cable that you're using uh, to install the logger. Are you going to hang it on a stainless steel cable or do you want to use a cable that allows you to read the data directly uh, from the top of the well without having to remove the logger? Or maybe it's a vented cable that you're going to be using. 
you also need to look at how you secure that cable at the top of the well. And again, it relates back to what type of cable you're using. Do you require a barrel logger to measure changes in atmospheric pressure or not? Uh, again, whether you're using a vented or non-vented type of um, logger. And if there are any other pieces of equipment that are installed in the well, you need to consider those. For instance, quite often you'll find uh, pumps, peristaltic pumps that are in, uh, installed in wells um, or balers. Here are some more installation tips we have. For instance, vented data loggers need a vented communication cable and should be installed according to the manufacturer's instructions. Direct read cables can also be used for non-vented data loggers. Again, make sure you're installing in core according to the manufacturer's instructions. Many non-vented data loggers are also installed on simple cables or lines, and these need to be removed or pulled from the well every time you're downloading the data from the data logger. On this slide, we show our preferred method for hanging data loggers using stainless steel cable. We employ the use of a hose clamp along with a uh, detachable clip and stainless steel swage sleeves to hold the wire firmly in place. But for more installation suggestions and uh, recommended materials, please visit our website at hydrogresources.com for more information. The final basic consideration to ensure you're collecting good quality data are the calculations. In this particular slide, you'll see a cross section of a well showing the position of a data logger in relation to a barrel logger, the overall depth setting of the data logger, as well as the water column that the logger will be reading. But probably one of the most important factors is that the value of D or the data logger depth is constant over time, both for your vented or non-vented data logger type. The accuracy of your measurements are affected by a number of factors. First of all, the accuracy of your data logger itself will be much greater than the accuracy of your installation depth setting or your manual water level measurements. The manual water level measurements are generally plus or minus one centimeter. Improving the accuracy of your depth setting measurement, that D value from the previous slide, is probably one of the most important things to improve your data accuracy. Avoid the tendency to determine that depth setting based on just strictly the data logger measurements. We strongly recommend to actually measure your depth setting because that D value will change over time and result in what you think to be sensor drift. So like everything, the care you take in your data logger installation and use will be reflected in the accuracy of your data. Planning the installation and recording as much information as possible in the process helps immensely. There really is no substitute for common sense so adapt to your own situation and good luck.